Well, good morning and welcome back. When it comes to the next couple of weeks, just know that things are going to start to get cool and by cool, I mean 60 and 70 degree temperatures. The um, Climate Prediction Center has issued the outlook for September 24th through the 30th, the end of the month, that we are going to be in a lot cooler pattern for the remainder of the month of September, which means those temperatures are going to dip down and that's actually reflected in our seven day forecast. I'll get to that in just a moment, but as for now, Let's look at our currents currently 62 out there dew point in the 50s winds very slow coming from the south and our visibility at about nine miles partly cloudy skies out there today so far this morning temperatures mainly in those upper 50s to lower 60s will continue to see those 60 degree temperatures within the coming hours does look like we'll reach those 70s by about noon and then our highs in the 80s later this evening winds are pushing in from the south that will help in fuse our area with some warmer air. Those winds will start to kick up later this afternoon as well. Visibility is still limited off to our south, especially three rivers as well as Coldwater and Battle Creek. You are experiencing just a little bit of that patchy or fog this morning for um, another morning in a row. So take it slow on the roads, pop on those headlights. Satellite and radar are showing just a couple passing clouds, but if we zoom out, we will start to see that there are still Chances for showers off to our north in the UP. A couple of showers forming in Illinois, and those are going to start to move toward our region later this evening. Let's go ahead and track it all out for you. We will get a lull in the clouds, a little bit of sunshine later this afternoon. Great afternoon and evening go to Art Prize. Then we will start to see those clouds bulking up later tonight, bringing chances of showers. Does look like these showers will be somewhat on the scattered and unorganized side. So getting rain will be a real hit or miss um, type of situation for this evening into Sunday. Sunday will also see scattered showers throughout the day. A couple rumbles of thunder are possible, and then these showers should start to fizzle out early Monday morning, tapering off by Monday afternoon. For today, temperatures are going to rise into those 80s, 83, partly cloudy skies. We could also see some haze. This haze is from the smoke from wildfires out west. That smoke entered the upper atmosphere around 10,000 to 18,000 feet. Those strong winds pushed it across the country, and now we can see some of that haze from those wildfires. For tonight, temperatures are going to dip down into the 60s, 67 degrees. We'll see those increasing clouds as well as um, some showers that will start to develop late. A little bit on the warmer side, those clouds are going to act like a blanket, keeping us warm headed into our Sunday. It does look like we are going to start to see those chances of showers throughout the day Sunday, lingering into Monday, tapering off by Monday morning. We then are going to have a nice dry Tuesday. Mostly sunny skies will dry us out, but we have some additional chances for showers, especially Wednesday. A couple of rumbles of thunder associated with those as well. And then it looks like fall really sets in on Thursday. This is where those cooler temperatures for the remainder of the month are going to take hold. 73 on Thursday with a couple of chances for some showers and then come Friday temperatures drop all the way into the 60s with partly cloudy skies. Well, a ton of high school football action last night in West Michigan, including our game of the week between Hudsonville and Caledonia. Here's Romy Monahan with your Blitz rear view. Just the second home game of the season for the Scots as they pack the route for game two of their OK Red schedule. Late in the first quarter, it's the visitors that get on the board first. Trey Carr passing to Eli Vanderveen, 13 yards with a score, 7-0 Eagles. Second quarter, Hudsonville on the doorstep again. Carr keeps it, is goes two yards into the end zone. They're up 14-0. Caldo gets on the board midway in the second. Brock Townsend starts in the middle, bounces right. 19 yards later, we've got ourselves a one-score ball game. Now with less than 30 seconds to go before the break, Mason McKenzie finds Townsend in the end zone. Four yards for the pass there. Game tied at 14. Second half, all fighting Scots Townsend diving in the end zone. Ruled down with a 26-yard gain at the one-yard line. He took it in on the next play, 28-14. Here in the fourth, Townsend putting that game away. 20-yard scoring run. Caledonia wins that one and remains unbeaten. Final score, 40-14 against Hudsonville. 
And Forest Hill Central hosting East Grand Rapids in the OK White. First quarter, it's scoreless. Little quiet game early on, but Justin Osterhaus goes back to pass, finds Ty Hudkins. He pulls that one down as he crosses the goal line. FHC up 7-0. Now in the second, same score. Pioneers on offense, but Max Richardson has other plans. Pulls that one down out of thin air. Takes it back to the house for the score. Rangers up by 14. Middle of the second, Osterhaus fakes the handoff. Rolls out. Passes to Richardson. That would be his second touchdown of the game. Rangers went on to take down EGR 31-7. The final score. And Unity Christian hosting Fruitport in the OK Blue. A great matchup between these two teams for First quarter, Crusaders Max Van Covering takes it in from three yards out. Two point conversion is good, so it's 8 0 Unity. Trojans now down 16 zip. Cody Nash takes off the handoff, makes a few Crusaders miss, and he's gone. 84 yards for the touchdown there. Two point conversion is no good, so it's 16 6 Unity. Now in the second, the Satyrs up by four. Or I'm sorry, on fourth, and they're driving here down the field. No stopping them on this play. Another 34 yards for the score. Crusaders get the win, 60 to 46, the final in that game. And to catch all the highlights of the games on the Blitz, head on over to fox17online.com. Search the keyword Blitz. You can also get the latest updates on local high school sports by following the Fox 17 Blitter, tw Blitz Twitter account. Excuse me, and our Facebook group on Twitter. That's all we have for the Blitz review. I'm. Remy Monahan. Remy, thanks so much. Your time now, 622. Still ahead, a wild scene caught on camera. A fishing trip takes a turn for the worst when a shark comes on board a boat. And you can't make this stuff up. NASA has a plan to crash into an asteroid, while the space agency says the test is vital for protecting the planet. Welcome back. It's time for your weekend wake up. It's the part of the morning where we share some stories making news around the country and the world. And this morning we start in New England with a fish tale that you have to see to <laughs> believe. A Mako shark jumped onto a fishing boat on the coast of Maine. And the whole thing was caught on camera. Marisa Bodner has the story. David Sinclair runs Sea Ventures Charters out of St. George, taking clients out to fish for sharks that they then get to see up close and help tag. His 16-year-old grandson, Cameron, is his first mate. I believe I caught my first shark when I was four years old. They mostly encounter blue sharks, but on this August day, 15 to 20 miles out to sea, it was a seven-foot mako. And all of a sudden, something took the bait really big, really fast, and we, he jumped. We knew he was a Mako instantly. It's on a fishing line with a young man, 16-year-old guy, turning the rod and you know having having fun fighting it. And it jumped uh, four times before it got to the boat. And the next thing we knew, he fell out of the sky and landed in the boat. So <laughs> the moment captured by the angler's dad, who was up on the bridge with his camera. And all of a sudden, here he is, right here in my face, and he hits me with his tail right on my left cheek, and he lands probably three feet from my right foot. Sinclair says Makos are fast fish with big teeth. Everybody scrambled and, you know, I just held my breath. I thought, boy, injuries, uh, high possibility and not a scratch on anybody. The shark was not injured. With everyone all right, he says they took some measurements, tagged the shark, then released it through the transom door. Just awe-inspiring to see the power of a fish like that and, and to be able to handle it safely and kick him out. A rather routine ending to an unforgettable fishing trip. Seeing one right here in my face falling out of the sky was pretty impressive. I was just saying uh, during that story that sharks are one of my favorite, well I just find them fascinating. I wouldn't say they're my fav one of my favorite animals, uh -huh. but fun fact, Mako sharks are the fastest shark in the world. Look at you so it's kind of cool that shark you facts. Caught. Yeah. <laughs> I, yep, nope, they scare me. They scare me a lot. I don't lot. want to swim with them, but I do know a little bit about them. Look at you. <laughs> Very nice. Well, a place that doesn't have the ocean in Ohio, a man was arrested for climbing through an airport luggage carousel, and it was all caught on camera. Yeah, let's take a look. Police recently released this video that caught 29-year-old Nicholas Garrett climbing through a carousel at Cleveland Hopkins International Airport on oh. July 3rd. Garrett told police he did it after he noticed his luggage had been opened and a pair of shoes estimated to be worth 
worth $1,000 were missing. He was arrested and charged with criminal trespassing. According to court documents, he pleaded no contest and was given a $198 fine. Wow. Look at him go. He just goes right on in there. I, you know, I, you know how you, do you ever get the urge to like hop on that carousel? Yeah, and I've heard that it's illegal, so that's what kind of so stops it's me. Very much illegal, apparently. <laughs> yeah. um, but all of those scenes in like Toy Story. Yes. Yeah. I just, I, I don't know. It's one of those things where you're like, I can't do, ever do that. You but can't. I wonder what it's like. Sometimes you want to go back there because your bags are taking so long. But don't do it, folks. You will be charged and arrested. <laughs> Well, turning to space now, NASA is planning on crashing a spacecraft into an asteroid. In about two weeks, NASA scientists will slam a refrigerator-sized spacecraft into an asteroid called Dim Dimorphos. Dimorphos? <laughs> Dimorphos. The crash is a test, and the asteroid is not threatening to Earth. Scientists, however, want to see if the collision can change the asteroid's orbit. It's the first test of its kind, and it could be a crucial step in learning how effective a crash could be in protecting the Earth from potential or from the potential of being hit by an asteroid. The mission is expected to happen on September 26th. They're just giving it a little push. Yeah, just a little <laughs> bump in a different so. direction. <laughs> Go that way, please. <laughs> <laughs> Wire time now, 629, still ahead. Adventure Seekers rappelled down one of Grand Rapids' tallest buildings. One of them was our very own Elliot Grandia. We'll take a look coming up. Now in Fox 17 Morning News, our prize continuing this weekend. We'll have a preview of some of the artists who are being featured. And if you're headed to Art Prize this weekend, know that today will be nice, but tomorrow, not so nice. I'll have the details on the rain for tomorrow coming up. And one West Michigan business giving your old clothes new life while helping a great cause. We'll take a look at Runway Angels. You're watching Fox 17 Morning News. Good morning to you. Thanks for choosing Fox 17 News. I'm Lauren Coomer. And I'm Isabella Holsizer. We have today's trivia question. <laughs> Words. We don't. <laughs> we, we do. I just don't know how to talk today. We have today's trivia question for all of you at home. Last week, we asked about the Grand Rapids old nickname of Furniture City. Furniture City. Furniture City. <laughs> for today's trivia, we are asking about a name, specifically our state's name. What does Michigan mean and what does the name derive from? We will have the answer later on in the show. Do you have any guesses? I haven't. Oh looked ahead and I cheated today? I did not cheat today either. Um, I, I don't know, maybe. I feel like it has to have either a French derivative or a Native American derivative. So Probably. one of the two. Some but I don't know what it means. Okay. Lighthouses? I don't know. I guess we're both going to learn. We will figure we're it out later learn. on in the show. Very nice. Yeah. Well, anyway, turning to weather. If you're mm. headed outside today, it's going to be a really nice day. Lots of um, sunshine for you. Some cloudier skies. And then those temperatures, still nice and warm, though. Many of us in the 80s. It does look like we have a chance for some rain tomorrow, though. So you are going to want to go ahead and bring along an umbrella if you do head to Art Price tomorrow as well as Monday, but only in the morning. When it comes to satellite and radar, we're looking at mostly clear skies. Couple of passing clouds. We have a nice shower um, line of showers off to our north but overall things are nice and quiet a little closer to home just a couple of those passing clouds we do have some fog limiting visibility in three rivers as well as cold water battle creek and here in Grand Rapids. That fog should start to lift within the next couple of hours. Temperature is mainly in those lower to mid 60s. Dew points also in the 60s. They're going to continue to rise over the next couple of hours, bringing us really to tiptoe that line between comfortable and um, humid. And then we'll bump up to muggy by Monday. So know that that is in store. When it comes to winds, they're pushing in from the south at about five to 10 miles per hour. A couple of these gusts could make it all the way up to 15. That will help infuse our warmer temperatures for later on today. Noon, we're going to hit about 77 degrees, partly cloudy skies throughout the entire day. Temperatures warming all the way up to those 80s. By about 5 o'clock, it does look like those clouds, though, will start to bulk up later this evening, bringing us the chances for rain late tonight. I'll time all of that out for you in my full forecast coming up in just a few. 
Good morning. Fox 17 traffic. A little surprise for Holland drivers. If you haven't been through the intersection of 16th and Pine, um, well, you'll uh, know by now that it is completely closed since yesterday. Part of the Pine Avenue reconstruction project, the intersection of Pine and 16th completely closed. You'll have to deal with the detours that are available to you through October 7th. I'm Rob wants to be Fox 17 traffic. Taking a look at the top stories this morning, a judge has granted one of the men accused of plotting to kidnap Governor Whitmer an early release from prison. Ty Garbin was originally sentenced to 75 months behind bars, but that sentence was reduced to 30 months. The judge said Garbin was cooperative during both of the trials of Adam Fox and Barry Croft. Garbin has been in custody since October of 2020. A man in Van Buren County has been sentenced to five years behind bars after he lied to get hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of veterans benefits. The Western Michigan District of the U.S. Attorney's Office claims 53 year old Joseph Scott Gray told the department for over a decade he couldn't walk or stand. Gray received $250,000 in benefits for that lie. He was reportedly seen walking shortly after an examination at a VA medical center. Gray was found guilty on several charges, including lying to the government. And a new report that details what led up to the death of 22-year-old Joseph Nagel has been released. Nagel died in early June after being shot and killed during a traffic stop. The report released by Michigan State Police say it all started after 10 a.m. on June 16th when Nagel was pulled over in Monterey Township. Details explain an Allegan County deputy performed a sobriety test and shortly after backup was called in. The report says Nagel and the deputy ended up fighting before shots were fired. Nagel died at the scene. The cause of death is listed as a gunshot wound to the chest. At last check, the deputy involved remains on administrative leave. Well, it's a big weekend in Grand Rapids as Art Price continues all across the city. Hundreds of artists are featured for the two week long event. Elliot Grandia tells us what we can expect this year. We're having so much fun. We're at one of the new venues this year hosting about nine artists. We've got Randy, he's the ice guru, uh, and we're at the Ice Castle. Uh, tell us a little bit about where we're at. So we're at 289 Front Avenue Southwest in Grand Rapids, and it's called the Ice Castle. If you look up on artprize.org, search the map for Ice Castle, all the stuff is over here. It's an interactive piece that you can walk through, made up of 14 different artists, uh, nine of which are actually registered artists in Art Prize, and you weave your way through creating art, being part of the art and seeing the art that's on, on display. Yeah, well, we've had so much fun out here. There's so much fun to be had with the kids, with the, with adults. Take it, coming out here on a date night and yeah, have a blast, right? take pictures together, and so many good Instagrammable moments, if you will. But that's not what this is about. This is about exploring art, and you guys have so many unique pieces. T talk about what went into this. So a lot of the work that went into this was kind of inspired by the building itself. So for instance, the zipper that Bo did out front is actually designed because when we looked at it, the bricks overlapped. It just looked like a zipper and it's it kind of jumps out at us so we looked at the parts of this this building and we wanted to have it completely immersed the blue koi in the fish tank area that's actually our production flow so the the fish actually flow the production follow the flow of the production for our ice sculptures so everything kind of fits uh, but it's also West Michigan -y, and we love that yeah, a lot of Grand Rapids, West Michigan pride, Michigan pride in general. Right. Another really cool thing is that there's going to be 750 artists coming to Grand Rapids, some from all over the world, and this is kind of a hub. You're having a haven for some of these artists to come meet together and network. We absolutely know that artists come from around the world and they don't necessarily want to go hang out in the restaurants all night um, and they are looking for some place to network with other people and sometimes there's just not a zone to do that we have a safe zone here where we've got a barbecue grill out there obviously all the ice you need right uh, and, and and some games and people can just hang out and relax and network together so please any artists that are in town feel free to get them a, give me a call or just stop over and enjoy our Chill zone. Yeah, definitely. So, so much fun to be had. Of course, we have all the information, everything you need to know. So much information packed into our press. Just head to fox17online.com. 
Well, that was our Elliot Grandia reporting. As summer changes into fall, many people will be revamping their wardrobe to get ready for that cooler season. Unfortunately, a lot of times discarded clothing ends up in landfills. The fashion industry is reportedly one of the biggest polluters in the world, but one way to solve that is resale shopping. According to a report by ThreadUp in 2021, secondhand sales displaced nearly $1 billion of new clothing purchases. Nearly half of consumers say when they shop for clothes, secondhand is the first place they look. Here in North America, the secondhand apparel market is expected to grow eight times faster than regular retail, and that number is expected to double within the next five years. That's what one West Michigan business aims to help with, giving your old clothes new life while helping a great cause. A new Ada consignment shop is doing just that one outfit at a time. Our Candace Monticelli checked out Runway Angels, a business that works to strengthen its community and make you feel like a million bucks. I love consignment because every day is like Christmas for us because we never know what's going to come in. The feeling of Christmas morning when you walk through the doors at Runway Angel in Ada, a consignment shop providing inclusive sizes with everything to put together your wardrobe. We have something for everyone. We have two unique rooms here. We have a more casual room and then we also have a room with more formal, um, some gowns and vintage as well. As each season fades, the clothes change within Runway angel, but the items that don't sell get yet another extended life. We donate our items to In The Image and they provide clothing and home necessities for those in need at no cost to those. And it's provided for everyone in need. No clothing going to waste, supporting those who need it most while repurposing and recycling your once loved items. Strengthening the community doesn't stop there with Runway Angels as they value to make consigning easy if you need the help. We will actually go into someone's home and help them declutter. So that could be somebody who just has so many things that they're overwhelmed. Or we've even helped some people who have lost a loved one who need to clear out the clothing. It's a fashionista's dream getting to shop from numerous different closets, building a unique outfit. Our best moments in here is when we're able to pick out an outfit, style someone on a budget, and make them look like a million bucks. In Ada, I'm Candace Monticelli, Fox 17 News. Runway Angels is one of Ada's shopping destinations participating in the town's Women's Night Out. You can find great deals and special giveaways all throughout downtown Ada. Well, your time now is 642, still ahead. Here is a look at the rest of your weekend forecast. I will have your full forecast coming up in just a few. Well, don't forget to connect with the morning team on social media. <laughs> Here's Isabella and I hula hooping last night in downtown Grand Rapids. We went to check out Art Prize and you can see we clearly had some fun. This is when we were getting a little loopy because we were tired and we were ready to go to bed, <laughs> but we didn't want to leave because we were having so much fun. Well, let's bring in Isabella. We walked around yesterday and got to check out some of the cool art.